Hello guys, this is Vaish. So today, August 7th, uh, Monday, we will discuss the editorials and uh, today will be a very, very short episode because the articles are all repeat articles like our Manipur issue or uh, the Rahul Gandhi's issue. So these are already like things which you have discussed and separate videos are also there. So I'll tell you the headlines also and you will understand that why I told it just like in 10 minutes uh, we can wind up this uh, episode. Okay. Usually Mondays are not like this. Mondays a uh, better article comes but uh, today's case, okay, today's case is not like that. And uh, before that, the test series, test series, it is open, the discounts, it's installment, everything will be there till Independence Day. August August 15th and then August 21 onwards one week after that the timetable starts meaning people have to sit and study from home as per the one year self-study program so that discounts we will not give it beyond 15th so only those who believe in YCIS model who believes this model or the teaching which we do is connecting with you our test series is connecting with you such people only should enroll to that okay so the details and all again if you don't know come and ask in whatsapp i'll give you the link and that video you can watch it and it will be fully clear including everything the fee structure schedule everything is there okay so that you can come and ask there now the uh, uh, headlines First one, as I told, Rahul Gandhi is back in parliament or it will be like uh, he will be now uh, a member of parliament because, you know, that time he was disqualified. So why he was disqualified, that is the technical part which you have to study, not the other court cases and other things. So that already when he was disqualified, that time in what basis? Okay, Representation of People Act 1951, there are some clauses, I think 8 clause 4 or something was there. In that it is written, like when you are convicted for 2 years uh, or more, then, then you will be automatically disqualified. It's not like Modi government did it or anybody did it. Any court gives you any punishment, conviction, criminal conviction, two years or more sentence, then you are automatically disqualified. Nothing else has to be passed that, okay, you vacate the bungalow or that Modi government don't have to do it after that. He did some uh, speech which had some controversial thing. A private person named Modi, he has given the case that you called every Modi as thief. He went and gave case. The case came like he has got two-year punishment. Okay. So, now what happened is Supreme Court. Okay. Obviously, it will go from higher uh, one court to another court. That time itself while making this video, we told this is just a temporary thing. Later anyway, Supreme Court will put it on hold. Okay or some, some loophole they'll find out and obviously he's going to stand in elections in 2024. That time itself we had told that. So this video, simply type Vaishaya's Rahul Gandhi, you will get this uh, uh, video in the YouTube. Okay, watch this video, you'll get all the technical prelims and mains points in that one. Then again, if you see, this is the uh, Manipur issue. Manipur issue also we have done multiple times in editorials and ma'am has done a separate video also which is uh, explaining the complete thing about the Methi community, about the Kuki Zomi community and recently I did a Mizoram article also where Mizoram's leader was using that for their political advantage, that issue uh, because they are also related to the Kuki Zomi uh, community. Okay, that full thing, theory, prelims, mains, everything we have covered. Please watch editorials daily. This is just the 30-31 episode now. So you can easily catch up. Everything is in one single playlist. Please catch up. Okay, if you are really serious to clear 24 or 25 attempt else no need to watch all this you have a lot of time for your exam okay so now next one this again haryana violence you know there also people are like riots are going on so that also ma'am will do a video actually it was supposed to come out today then uh, she had some other uh, health issues and other things and so we asked her to okay wait for two three days and then publish it so haryana video will come where we explain what is the haryana violence so that one video will be suffic sufficing you don't need to daily read newspaper and understand what they are fighting and who are all fighting okay so that three article gone now this one if you see chess tournament so chess why it's important from now because upsc in prelims 2023 asked a detailed question on chess but there was a reason that because india hosted the chess olympiad that is why they asked it but that they can ask again okay so that is why here if you see chess what happening now is in azerbaijan uh, country uh, there the capital baku there the new uh, chess world cup is going on so in chess world cup this person indian uh, gukesh he replaced vishwanathan anandan who is our india's uh, number one player he is replacing this uh, vishwanathan anandan as the uh, top uh, india's number one player in the ratings and chess ratings is actually called elo ratings e l o rating okay what is the full form and this thing and all you don't have to study elo ratings if you pc ask it is the chess rating live rating Meaning now the competition is going on. He is defeating person after person. You can see in the other page, the photo you can see that is him only. He is defeating another one person. So he is following the footsteps of Vishwanatha Anand and defeating one by one the persons. Okay. So now uh, this LO rating he is now live, but that doesn't mean the number one player he has become. Now this full tournament has to get over and then only we will know the final thing. Okay. So once before also it has happened in 2016, another some Hari Krishna or something, some player uh, in live rating he was ahead of Vishwanathan Anand. But the overall rank, overall India's number one player rank in the world federation chess world ranking is there which is FID rank, FIDE ranking. Okay. So LO rating and FIDE ranking is both related to chess tournament. This is your prelims uh, fact. Okay. And Baku is the capital of Azerbaijan. This is the only thing take away from that article. 
okay so we have to wait and see because this gukesh is close so there is a chance that even that number one position which vishwanath and overall is uh, having since 1986 i think that is going to be beaten for the first time okay so that's a very important thing which will happen in this side charts and graph also his photo only is given and his uh, that the ratings and uh, game by game game by game what is his points and all that is given in graph which is not important for you so this way if you see half of the paper is almost uh, not useful for discussing today okay because it's already discussed or it's not worth discussing okay then again if you see here telangana elections are going to come 23 uh, 2023 elections will happen same like now karnataka is facing where you do a lot of poll promise but later you are not able to fulfill it the current government is also facing it okay they have struggle of fund for their uh, dalit bandhu scheme where 17700 budgetary something they announced then ritu bandhu scheme for uh, agriculture okay this is actually in center also we have the similar kind of scheme so uh, their localized scheme name is ritu bandhu uh, scheme so here on all the fund you announce in budget but later you are not able to find the sources of money to fulfill them so that they have written there nothing else is written it's election political uh, thing okay then this article this is the only one which i felt which is new which till now didn't come and why it is come now because on august 2nd this bill became an act jen vishwas amendment bill it became an act okay when lok sabha and rajya sabha pass it it becomes an act so it is like passed now on august uh, uh, 2nd 2023 that is why we will discuss this and it's a very simple thing again it's a very simple thing but in two slides three slides i will explain to you the uh, full concept okay so please read all this this is about note making and whether you should do something else for editorials and current affair just to make a note of this and then uh, test series again come and contact me uh, for uh, this whatsapp number is given 7200681675 uh, i'll give you foundation and then after that you can watch free classes also in vice courses channel lot of psc related and this other exams rbi nabard sebi we are planning some video series it will come soon okay so so subscribe and be ready for that also if you want so foundation is the first step for your preparation no matter which year you're preparing for so government introduced this uh, jan vishwas amendment of provisions bill in the lok sabha this was last year's uh, uh, so last last weeks or few weeks back uh, uh, news now it has been passed it was introduced in lok sabha passed in lok sabha went to rajya sabha there also passed and it went to a joint committee there also passed everything done and now finally it is an act okay so here if you see PRS website. This I teach you in my foundation also. Whenever any bill, the exact provisions in proper language, in easy language, you have to understand means you have to read the PRS website. Any act, you take PRS Space Maternity Benefit Act, uh, PRS Space any uh, any Demonetization Act. Any act comes that acts actual text. If you see the right side, it's written like bill text, the PDF. The PDF, original government's language, you can read there, but that is not necessary for you. You can read this simple text, what they have written here in this center position. Okay, that will give you the proper bullet point clause, which you can just like that by heart and use it in your main answers also. Okay, everyone are reading coaching notes. You read this one. This is much better when it comes to act. And that doesn't mean you have to buy heart all the act now. You go and check the previous year papers. You will understand what kind of act UPSC is asking. Okay. So here, Jen Vishwas Amendment Bill 2022. What they are doing is existing. We have lot of laws which from uh, our uh, British days and all. We are just copy pasting and using. Okay. Like Indian Post Office Act is there. Environment Protection Act is there. Our uh, Public Liability Insurance Act is there. So many, many act which is not very like criminal, criminal things and all. Civil kind of things. But still, the punishments written in that is very criminal kind of thing. Okay. Meaning, like, suppose I am telling example, it's not true. Suppose Indian Post Office Act, it's written that, okay, when Mr. A's letter came, okay, and Mr. B goes and opens the letter and read it or misuse it, then some penalty, something you can put, but sometimes it will be written two year punishment in jail, okay. So, this is an example, it's not true. So, I am telling such civil things which can be in sorted out in penalty or something very small. You are putting big, big, big punishments. Such very draconian laws are there in our system, which nobody cared to even repair it. Go government after government is simply following the same thing. So, you know, this government has this habit of in like whitewashing, completely deleting many things. So, many things they start from str like demonetization is one example, GST is one example, Kashmir is one example. Anything is like something which is never happened, which is like one second it can create a shock also. Such kind of policies these government keep implementing. Okay. So, this is also like that. 42 laws they have amended, the examples are given. And this is the PRS, this is not there in Hindu. So, this thing they are doing, this is the basic idea. This one liner, if you understand, then this article is very easy. Okay. So, here if you see in the article, the controversial Jan Vishwas Act 2022 was recently uh, enacted into law by parliament. Okay, that also you can see. Status, you see the three boxes. First, it was under joint parliamentary committee. Okay, before that also there is arrow mark you can see. There was like introduced in Lok Sabha. There are many things will be there, discussion and also. Final three stages is this one. Okay, March 17th, it went to joint parliamentary committee. Now in the monsoon session, uh, it passed in Lok Sabha. In the again monsoon session August, it passed in Rajya Sabha. That's how a bill becomes an act. Okay. 
so now this is enacted so government as a tells us that's a landmark legislation aimed at improving ease of doing business because you know anything like small small thing each time you have to run to the court and indian court you know there are thousands of cases pending you cannot solve everything there so here better you make it to small offenses make it like okay it's like a, a penalty of uh, 20000 rupees 2000 rupees or something you compromise outside something something if you write that way offenses then you don't need judiciary through this bureaucracy itself, you can solve it. Okay, any such kind of complaint, don't go to court, go to uh, IAS or go to a small tribunal which is set up for that under the IAS unit or something. So like that, they have shifted. Okay, you can tell that second red line if you see, mostly replaced criminal imprisonment with penalties. It has transferred the power to impose these penalties from the judiciary to the bureaucracy. This is what is the one liner, what happened with this act. Okay, and they are giving examples, Environment Act, Air Act in 1981. Okay, like penalties up to 15 lakh can be imposed by the uh, Joint Secretary or the uh, bureaucrats itself. Earlier bureaucrats cannot put this much big, big punishments. Okay, so that they have shifted. So it's actually, Technically, if you see, polity-wise, it is from judiciary to executive a uh, separation of powers. And that is one point which is I felt uh, UPSC related. Okay, so that we'll discuss. The last line, if you see, separation of powers. So, Indian Forest Act also, you see in the center, Indian Forest Act, the IFS officers, the forest officers will now have the power to not just conduct the inquiry, which, you, which they usually used to do, uh, to determine what damage is done to the forest by anybody, but also order the offender to pay this uh, compensation. Okay, so that is the extra thing happened through this act. So now, uh, again, tax terrorism, many problems happen. So bureaucracy every time won't have a role, but now they will be deciding all this. Now, the larger question is, is it going against the constitutional scheme of separation of powers? Because we know there is separation of powers, legislative, executive and judiciary. Okay, legislative means our parliament, lawmaking body. Okay, executive means the one who is there in the ruling, who is actually implementing the execute, the one who executes something. Okay, like now the uh, NDA government, they are the executive. So the president, everyone are executive. Whoever implements something, uh, they are the executive, including IAS officer, all are executive. Legislative is the lawmaking body, parliament. Okay, judiciary, you know, courts. This is the three separation of powers written in our uh, constitution. So that we'll discuss a little bit. Where is this written in the constitution? Separation of powers. This is a UPSC question, UPSC prelims question. Article 50. And where is Article 50? It is under DPSP. DPSP is what? If you are a beginner, DPSP is Directive Principles of State Policy. Meaning, first thing, basics, okay, just five minutes I'll tell. How is our constitution written? Ambedkar did not sit and write what he likes in whatever order. Meaning, first line, Article 1, he did not write, okay, elections, Article 2, President. He didn't write like that. There is a proper pattern. Okay, there's a proper pattern like Article 1. <clears throat> Article 1 about India, that is Bharat. About India, they wrote the country. Then Article 2, 3, 4, again about the Indian states. What if India tomorrow acquires a state? What if some merger happens? So about India and the state, meaning the land, that is what Article 1 to 4. Then what he did? Now land is ready. Now people has to be there. So Article 5 to 12 is about citizenship and people's uh, that kind of thing. Okay, meaning people becoming officially Indian, that clause is written in 5 to 12. After that, uh, 13 is another about uh, what is the definition of something, definition of state. After that, Article 14 onwards, what? Now, country is ready, people are ready. Now, what? Give them rights. So, that they wrote from Article 14 to Article 32. Okay. So, it's very beautifully written. So, what is fundamental rights? Fundamental right is something which is uh, judicially, you can like go and give a case. You can get like my Article 26 is violated. My Article uh, right to life is violated. My freedom of speech is violated. You can go to the court. That is the speciality of this article 14 to 32. Okay. Judicially, there is a rem remedy for you. Okay. Article 14 to 32. Now, that is done. Now, Ambedkar decided to write some more things. Okay. In between, there is article 33, 34, 35, which is again rights only, but like in like a military uh, rule comes or something military related that problems time, what is the rights? That is written in article 34, 33, 34, 35. This is all you will study in Lakshmi Katha. I am just telling a summary very quickly. Then article 36 onwards, 36 to 51 is your DPSP. Okay, directive principle of state policy. This is something which Ambedkar thought we cannot force like uh, very like now itself to the uh, people, but we will put in such a way that it's a direction, directive principles, which we are giving to the governments. The successive government in due course of time should implement it one by one as per the like how India is progressing. Okay, including our uniform civil code, which we have separate video, article 44 is there. I told you, 36 to 51 is this. This concept many people don't have. Many people are just by that this is that, that is this. You should know how this constitution was written. 
Lakshmikanth has copied this only. Lakshmikanth copied this and made it in simple language. That is why that is the best seller textbook. Okay, because people tell other DD Basu and many textbooks and all. This is the best textbook because he has made the constitution simplified for you in UPSC perspective. Okay, so now 36 to 51 is this. So this 50, which I am talking, Article 50 is also there, right? Judiciary and executives, separation of powers. And 44 is also here. Then even the cow slaughter, this and all is written there. Cow slaughter article number I forgot, 47 and 48 is like uh, cows and uh, bullock and other milk producing animals, milk animals should not be killed. It's written. Okay, but we have not implemented it. But maybe Uttarakhand and some states are implementing it as per Ambedkar told in future. And so when they implement it, there you cannot kill a cow now. Okay, but in places like maybe Kerala, Northeast and all, they will kill cow. It's a food there. So that depends from whether you are implementing it or not. So that is the difference between fundamental right and DPSP. So now I'm, I'm telling all this so that you learn. Okay, static also I want you to learn. Today's article, there is nothing much I can explain to you. So I'm giving you maximum knowledge free of cost. This is all your polity syllabus actually. Okay, so now article 50 directs the state to achieve this in due time. Okay, the separation. So such a separation, author is telling, has not achieved until several years. Okay, around 1970, several states, like example, they're telling West Bengal separation of judicial and executive functions act 1970. They officially like judicial magistrate, executive magistrate like that, uh, they did, okay, in some criminal act and all. So like that, slowly, slowly in the 70s only we started implementing. Ambedkar wrote it in the 50s, okay, 40s and 50s. So now, uh, 80s also, they're telling some good points they have given. 80s also, our government in different methods have tried to take some things which is under judiciary to our executive to our bureaucrats okay some examples are given first the ministries have already started making judicial tribunals you know maybe electronics ministry if some issue is there they will make a okay this particular tribunal okay so discuss that particular things if happens don't go to supreme court and high court come and fight here here there will be separate bureaucrats uh, uh, commission we made there we'll solve the issue they will give the judgment they will give the compensation they will give the solution so already we have been doing uh, judicial tribunals under different ministries that is point number one. Second point we started creating regulators I mean the, we means government started making regulators like SEBI is there RBI is there competition commission of India is there so stock market related issue and all don't go to high court and supreme court go and fight here go to competition commission of India raise a complaint okay then they will give the judgment for that so like that that is second method which government is doing since the 80s to take the judiciary's powers a little bit and put it to the executive. Now, third one, uh, if you see again, number of other legislations are there like Prevention of Money Laundering Act, Information Technology Act, Food Safety and Standard Act. Here also, there are there itself provisions are written. If something is violated, what to do? If somebody comes with a complaint, what to do? You don't have to go to court. Consumer complaints are solved there itself. Okay. So like this, here also adjudicating officers, there are bureaucrats. Okay. It will be maybe under an IAS is heading it or a junior IAS officer heading it. Something will be connected to the bureaucrats also. So this is the methods in which we already have been doing this. What now through a big Jan Vishwas Act, which we have officially brought in India in all the act. Okay. So now, uh, again, they're telling national tax tribunal and some other things and all they're telling it is a challenge before the courts and uh, this encroaching thing. Okay, so that's always a debatable thing. It's a controversial act. Now, the question essentially comes down to the definition of judicial function. Okay, so this they're telling Supreme Court is very clear that judicial function can be discharged only by an independent judicial authority, not under the control of the executive. Okay, meaning now government is taking everything and giving to these bureaucrats. Is it legal? Is actually this judicial functions and all this uh, giving fine, giving uh, compensation, this and all, do bureaucrats actually has the power? They are executives. Their task is to implement policies, uh, run uh, how the government is running, uh, sorry, how the village is running, what plans are executed there, uh, the that fund and all is transferred or everything proper. This is the actual job of executive. So this giving verdicts, is the is it actually coming under executive or not? Or is it only under judicial independent authority like actual judge? who is like LLA, LLA, sorry, LLB judge, uh, that is what Supreme Court tells. Okay, so this definition is not clear. Okay, and whether imposing a penalty, is it a judicial function or it's okay that okay, bureaucrat do it, that debate is still there. So there's no conclusion here, author is ending with a, uh, a confusion here and he is actually favoring the judiciary. He's telling like this government should not give everything under uh, executive because executive is ultimately who? kind of you cannot tell puppets but still who has to obey the government okay government will tell the implement that implement that give that that so it's like you are itself the uh, people who make the law and somebody violate you are the one who make the judgment everything is you okay that's what here uh, they're telling government cannot be a prosecutor and judge in its own case this is the essence of rule of law rule of law was asked in last year's prelims okay meaning uh, natural justice the rule of law is that only natural fairness should be there and everything so now 
the Jan Vishwas Act allows bureaucrats in charge of enforcing the law to also conduct an inquiry and impose the statutory penalty on a finding of wrongdoing is constitutionally suspect. So this thing which you are giving that is constitutionally suspect is we don't know whether it is actually in line with the constitution. Can you give this power to the bureaucrats or not? I mean inquiry is fine. You can inquire. But after that the uh, punishment should be given by the court. That is what the author is uh, telling. So Republic of India is backsliding on the separation of powers because of constant efforts by the bureaucracy of the union executive to encroach upon the judicial powers with the help of ministers and all these things. So center is trying to this thing okay this opposite thing is also there whenever judiciary tries to go and uh, overreach in the law and all we tell judicial overreach judicial activism such terms are also there this is the opposite of there where bureau uh, executive is trying to get into the powers of judiciary okay both happens so that separation of powers is written in our article 50 dpsp this government is trying to implement through jan vishwas act and it's already passed also now later governments may be repealing it and all that is different thing but as of now it is act is passed and that is the thing explained here okay so this kind of clarity will be there in whichever main videos which i give you uh, prelims test which i give you all these still have clarity okay we will not simply throw materials at you so please try to understand the value if you are understanding things which i explain you our test pdfs also you will understand okay and daily other things are anyway free like are free editorials are free and many other things videos you would have seen biography videos are coming or uh, science and other lectures are coming many things we put it for free only the test series is paid part and best part is you get an integrated timetable for one year day by day what to read what to study and then after that particular particular day i will give you test pdf this are all is there in this uh, prelims and mains batch okay so now you can come and whatsapp me you are enrolling to test series your choice if you are not enrolling at least watch the 30 free foundation okay where i have explained 30 videos explaining what is UPS many people don't know these basics they are just taking ncrts and by hurting and when the exam comes they are stuck like wow, how to solve this how come this came i read this many times the history textbook still i am not able to solve you are not able to solve because you don't know that this is what was to be expected from that page you are reading okay that how you will get how to become a serious aspirant which i have two part video also out of the 30 two videos are that only how to make you a serious aspirant from a non-serious aspirant i have explained there free of cost so come and whatsapp me and learn follow us on instagram also where i put a lot of videos and uh, uh, post and even funny post and all sometimes come just to keep your mood okay and all so this please take it seriously okay so i'll wind up this video anything tell in comment section thank you and have a nice day